Alrighty, critters, you have seen my tie. If you watch my live stream, you've already seen these instructions, but here's a, a normal video for people who don't want to watch a seven hour stream to learn how to do this. <laughs> um, so I made this flexi tie. And of course I printed it with um, uh, no top and bottom layers in order to um, have that cool infill pattern. By the way, I have a shop now for my digital downloads. If you go to shop.nerice.com, you'll find my digital downloads. Yes, some of these are available for free on Thingiverse, but like I said, the way I'm going to do it is, um, well, I'm going to do both for a lot of things. I'll make them available for free, just the STL files, and then I'll also make them available for a price that you can pay if that's how you want to support me. Um, and also, some of these will include G-code files and more detailed instructions than you're going to get for free on Thingiverse printables. And some things will just be available here. But anyway, I'm going to offer service. The tie is 4 bucks, or for nine fifty, you get the tie and you get a customization. And I'm going to show you how to do the customization for free. <laughs> or if you don't want to, you can pay me and I'll do it for you. <laughs> so here we have the tie, and one of them is blank. That's so you can add whatever you want. You see here I added the Lucky Cat to the tie. And I added the Tari Home um, system for the Stargate emblem so we'll call that home someone on the stream wanted me to put the toyota logo so i'm going to show you how to do that so the first thing you have to do is you have to find an image that you want to emboss you take you upload the tie the blank one to thing to um tinkercad like i am here you just click on import and you grab that file by the way you can also put emblems on this piece here that's more than big enough to put a nice little emblem on there and heck, if you have a big family, you can even you can put names or symbols on all these if you want. Um, it's up to you how detailed you want to make it. But most people would probably be happy just putting something on the knot just as a little decoration. I already had one guy make one and he put the electronic symbol there. With the E symbol or electron engineer symbol, something like that. I don't know. Some kind of electronics symbol looked pretty cool. We I mean, did triangle infill. Looked nice. So what you need is an SVG. And to get an SCG, you need a clip art. So you see here I got the Toyota symbol and I have my rocket ship for my today's 3D print logo. Okay, that's, I just imported that as an SVG. So how did I make that? So let's pick something at random. Um, oh. Um, what about the Protopasta logo? I love it. Uh, let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's do Atomic Filament. I like their filament. I like protopasta too, but I don't know where that little robot is. Uh, do they have a symbol? No, they just have a name. Uh, they kind of have it, but that's that's not going to look very nice. There we go. Protopasta. Oh, they do have a symbol. There it is. That little symbol right there. Um, is there a larger version of it? Well, it doesn't have to be very large. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Let's see, can I grab that? Yes, I can. And of course, it's a WebP, but I can open that and save it as a JPEG. Uh, save as... Uh, we'll do it as a PNG because I think it has um, shading layers and those shading layers might not appear in a JPEG because it's black. Um, so this may not work. Can I invert this? Image. Uh, uh, where's an invert? Invert image. All channels. Nope. That didn't work. Image. I think it's a black on black or something like that. It's weird. Huh. Okay, we'll do it a different way. Right click, take screenshot, and I want a screenshot of that. There you go. Now it's mine. <laughs> so you come in here and you type PNG to SVG. 
and it's gonna you're gonna look for this one called Convertio. And you click on Convertio. I have the JPEG one up here, so I thought I was gonna be doing a JPEG. And you see here, choose files, PNG to SVG. This is totally free. You click choose files. We go to the downloads folder, and you'll see here's my protopasta symbol. Now, this is a tiny one, so we don't have to worry about it, but make sure it's 1,000 pixels or less. No dimension can be greater than 1,000 pixels, or you won't be able to import it into Tinkercad. And unless you have a crazy amount of detail, you want to keep it small, to, you know, like 100, 150, you know, 200 pixels max, max, because it's going to come out pretty big when you upload it into Tinkercad. So you wait for it to get finished. It's converting. Oh, I finally got the backup mini split unit working, the original unit I had in the house. It's not enough to heat the whole house, but it's enough to keep us from freezing <laughs> without spending a fortune running the resistance heater. Um, Michelle's old V20 from LG ended up being what worked. I downloaded a Whirlpool AC remote app um, onto her LG V20, which has an IR blaster. And um, I was about to give up because they had like 19 remotes and none of them working. Number 19 worked. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was number 19 <laughs> and it works so i got that thing on so here we go download you see it downloads screenshot svg we come back into tinkercad you go to import choose file and you select your svg that you just converted here we go it's going to be 68 by 59 which is perfect you want to make sure oh i almost forgot you want to make sure your image your ideal image is going to be like clip art you want something that is two color, white background, black foreground, or any color foreground. What you want to avoid is crazy intricate details, and you want to avoid shading. You know, shading is going to cause you a problem. Because um, some parts of it might get determined to be background, and some parts of it might get determined to be foreground. So reduce the color depth. You want things that basically work as clip art. Because you're basically going to stamp it into the model. And here we go. We have the logos. Now, first thing I'm going to do is start shrinking these things down because they are way too big. And remember to keep proportions the same. Hold down the shift key before you grab one of these control corners. And it'll keep the X and Y dimensions proportional to each other. See? You don't have to worry about them changing, doing this. You know, altering your um, aspect ratio. Same thing here. Shrink it down. Okay. Uh, that's probably going to need to be a little bit smaller. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a work plane on top of the blank tie. And then we're going to lift these both up until they are zero. You see this one here has the two, two lines. It's showing its distance from work plane. Zero. Same thing here. Lift it up. Change your perspective if you have to. This is how far you've moved from your last position. This is your absolute position relative to your work plane. So we want to set the absolute position to zero. Okay. Actually, what we want is negative 0.4. So negative 0.4. Because we want to put it two layers into the plastic. So just lift it up. Here's your absolute from the work plane. Negative 0.4. There. Now we're going to embed these. Put your work plane back down here just to clear up your screen. Now these will embed into the model. So we're going to turn them into holes. Holes. And all you got to do is put this right on your tie. However you want to do it. So we're going to change this to off to allow fine movement. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. Let's duplicate this a couple times. Control D, Control D. Because I'll show you the Toyota logo again, which I've already uploaded. So we have another one here, another one here. So we take this, get it approximately where we want it. Now, something like this, we're going to want to center that. So select them both and then just do your alignment tool right here and just pick the one here for the vertical center. Boom. Now it's nice and centered. Then we take this one and see if it fits. Yes, it fits. There we go. I like that. And this one is asymmetrical, so we're not going to center it. We're just going to put it where we like it. And that's it. We take these two. We merge them. We take these two. We merge them. And we take these two. We merge them. There you go. Now you have a, a tie 
where you can embed something into the surface of it. And now it'll print with that embossment. Now, let's see, do we have time? Yeah, we're only at 10 minutes, so we're gonna show you a little bit more of an advanced technique to um, do something interesting if you wanna do. Um, what you're going, this is gonna take some slicer work or you're gonna to have to chop the file up in here, okay? Slicer work is easier if you can do that. So here's what you do if you wanna make this two color, but you also wanna make it flat. You could just print on top of this. So if you wanted to, Let's just do the protopasta one, okay? You could bring this up to zero. Let's, we'll just bring it up 0.4. Bring it up. Now, this is your relative movement. That's what we want, 0 0.4. So now it's sitting right on top. And let's make it two layers thick. So we're gonna make it 0 0.4 thick. And we're gonna turn it into a color. Let's say we're going to use, I don't know, I like their blue. So we're going to use blue. And we're going to print the tie in like, um, I don't know, vertical gray or something like that. Well, no, let's use protopasta colors. Um, what's another good proto? That Christmas red color they have. Okay, let's pretend that's that candy apple red. And then the, the, the um, what is it? Um, Joel Telling blue. Um, I think he got it from protopasta. Yeah, I think it was protopasta. Okay, so now we're going to print that. Now, what you do is you save both of these as STL files. You select this piece and you export it, save it as an STL. Then you select this piece and you export it and you save it as an STL. What that's going to do is give you um, two different STLs. You drag both of those STLs. As a matter of fact, let me show you. Hang on. So export STL. There it is, FlexiTie Knot. Export STL. And it should be FlexiTile not one. Okay. Now we bring new add. Let's do a basic printer here. I'll bring it onto the screen for you in a moment. Um, let's see here. Let's do two perimeters, no vase mode, three top and bottom layers, 0.2 millimeters. Okay, so here is our slicer. And what we will do is bring in both those files downloads flexi tie knot and flexi tie knot one okay now this is important you select both of these files um, you'll have to figure out how to do this in your slicer in our in, in simplified 3d i select both i go to edit and i go to align selected model origins and what that does is it puts one on top of the other because that's where they were relative to each other in the slicer in in um in the cad program now I'm gonna select both of them and click group models. What this is gonna do is allow me to move these around without disturbing the relative model origins. Otherwise, if I tried to move one, the other one would stay put. So by grouping them together, I can move them around. This is important if you wanna do multiple pieces on the bed at once. Now what we do here is we do multiple processes. So I'm gonna just copy selected process, paste selected process. I'm gonna pick process one. And I'm going to tell it to just do the knot. And I'm going to pick process two. And I'm going to tell it to do just the logo. And now if I slice this one, uh, this doesn't matter. We're only going to do one process. No, it doesn't need support. There you go. It prints the knot. Okay. And then I select the second process, prepare to print, the second process only. And I know it doesn't need support. Yes, it's printing in midair. But remember, this is going to already be there because you printed it first. Here's the trick for doing that. You either do a print where um, you use a print surface that does not require heat. Okay? If you're using glass, PEI, PEX, or anything like that, what you have to do is come into your first print settings, scripts, end script and you delete at the minimum delete turn off bed heat i would turn off both so take these both and you delete them now it's going to um you can also get rid of this moving the y plate there's just no reason to but you do want to home the x to zero to get it off the top of the model disable steppers turn off cooling fan is fine but if you're if you're disabling the heat you also want to disable turning off the cooling fan 
you want to, you know, just basically you're just going to home and disable steppers. That's it. Okay. And now when it's done printing this first piece, it's going to keep the heat bed on. And by keeping the heat bed on, your part's not going to release. <laughs> then you simply execute the second G code file. And it's going to lift up and print right on top of this print. It actually does work. Now, here's the really cool part. If you want to print it embedded into the model, this is a little extra time here because we're at 15 minutes. We're all getting pretty long here. Um, what we can do is go back to putting this down. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. We can get back to putting this down, uh, negative 0 0.4. Okay. And we're going to make this a little bit taller 0 0.41 just so we can make sure we can see it it won't print that 0 0.1 millimeter but we can see it now you have to duplicate this part control d turn it into a hole and merge it with the tie knot now what that's going to do is you still have your one here because you duplicated it it's going to create a hole for this to fit in Okay, now you do the same thing. You export the knot with the hole in it, and then you export this piece inside that hole. Export STL, one of my phones is about to die. <laughs> um, then you come back to the slicer, and we're gonna remove these parts. You might as well keep these same two processes. We're gonna work with them. And you bring in your two new parts. And you do the same thing. You select them both. You go to Edit, Align Selected Model Origins. Now, this is where it gets important. The first process is going to be this tie, but it's going to be without the rest of the print. And the way we're going to do that is this way. We're going to select this process. We're going to go Prepare to Print. We're going to print it. Yes, we know. Uh, that should not have done that. Why did it do that? I must have Helium enabled or something. See, they, they changed it to where I can't get rid of, um, I guess merge all boundaries. I don't know what I need to do, but I needed to not do that. It's usually smart enough, but sometimes it doesn't do it right. What the heck? I got the right files, right? Yeah. Um... What the hell? Oh, 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 I got both models selected. <laughs> okay, so we want just the tie. Okay, that's my, that's my bad. This one is going to be just the emblem. There we go. There we go. So here we are. We printed this, but we want to stop one layer sooner. We want to stop at layer 51. Now we know this is 51, and we know we're printing at 0.2 millimeters, so we bring up our calculator, and we type in 51 times 0.2. That is 10.2 millimeters. So we are going to tell this process here, and we're going to duplicate this process, copy and paste, and we're going to put that up here. Oop. Now to keep straight, we're gonna call this one not. We're gonna call this one um, emblem. And we're gonna call this not finish. Um, oh, no, wait a minute. We can't do that because if we... Yeah, 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 not finish. Okay. okay. Now, this works a lot better on a direct drive printer. So we take the knot and we go to here, custom zones. And we're going to stop printing at 10.2. Save. Now, this is going to be the finish of the knot. Select models. Um... It's still the proper knot. Good. Custom zones. We're going to start at 10.2 and finish at 10.4, which is finish the model. Okay. 
that is the wrong file. We want this. There we go. Emblem is this. This is, should be the emblem. These got reversed. And this is the not, which should be file two. Yes. So you're going to have three STL files. This requires an extra filament change, but this works pretty nicely. You print this and you select not. And it's going to print this plus one extra layer. Then you come back and you print the emblem. And it's going to print the two layers of the emblem. And then you come back and you print the last finish of the knot. Emblem. Oh, nope. Just not finish. Which is just going to print this final layer. Now, the reason you have to do that that way, and also, I'm sorry, one more change. This one here, you want to make it one perimeter. So, one outline perimeter. The reason you want it one outline perimeter is so that the perimeters of your knot color doesn't interfere with um, the visual look of your um, emblem in the middle. If you have more than one perimeter, it starts to look a little weird because you can see that extra border around your emblem. And it can make your emblem look soft. It can look weird. So you want that last perimeter to be one perimeter. And that'll give you that real clean outline of your model. Um, now, you could... You could print the entire knot with both layers. And then print the emblem into the knot. And that will work. It won't be as clean. Okay, so that would give you one less STL file. And you don't have to do one color change. You would basically print this with no custom zones. Okay. Um, you would print the knot. Now, I would advise modifying your settings. So what I would do is I go variable settings. I would set 10.2. I would add that as a variation there. So for most of the knot, I would use three perimeters. But for that final layer, I would use one perimeter. And then when you go to print, you print both of these at the same time. It's because of the hole underneath for the magnet that it keeps telling me I need support. So now you can see um, all your layers get three perimeters. So you get that nice strong print, but your final layer gets one perimeter. So you get that really neat emblem in the middle. The problem with doing this is that... Um, well, you're, 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 unless, you, um, unless you add something here to print up to 10.4 millimeters so that when the nozzle moves over top of this part here, that it doesn't drive through the top layer. Because remember, if you're printing at 10 millimeters, your nozzle is going to be at 10.2 millimeters. So it's going to miss the first layer, but it's going to crash through the second layer. Now, it's not going to fail or anything, but you're going to put a mark in the print. Unless you set it up perfectly, like if you make your start point right here, it'll only crash through this little tiny section here. And that might be acceptable to you. Or what you do is you, um, you do a sequential print and you put an object here that's 10.4 millimeters tall. And when it changes from one object to another object, it stays at the 10.4 millimeters until it gets to its start point and then it comes down. And that'll help it avoid driving through the top layer of your model. And But now you only have to do one filament change. Now the other problem is your nozzle's not a, a, a single 0.4 millimeter point. It's a 0.4 millimeter hole with a 0.8 millimeter disc around it and then a cone. All right, It's a nozzle. So it's, it's shaped like this and the 0.4 millimeter hole is in the middle. And so what's going to happen is if, if you come down into this, it's going to melt and push aside the outer perimeter of the top layer and that's going to make your print look muddy this is an exaggerated example of it but it's going to do this see how it muddied the orange really bad but you can see it didn't do the purple as bad now you can tune that and get it a little bit better okay but if you do the two color changes and if this is a direct drive printer this is much easier to do if you do the two color changes then um, 
you're not pushing through one layer to get to the layer below it. And so the hot nozzle is not pushing the plastic out of its way to get to that layer. Even if your nozzle comes down right here to start this print inside of here, remember, your nozzle is not shaped like this. Your nozzle is shaped like this. And so this part of the nozzle is going to be pushing this line, this blue line, it's going to be pushing it aside. And it's going to smear and mix the colors or it's going to create a gap. So if you print the first layer of the hole, well, then the nozzle is going to be at the perfect height to insert that second layer. Now, why do you want to print two? Well, you don't have to. You could print to 10.2 millimeters and stop and then print your color. Believe it or not, printing is extraordinarily reliable when you're printing on top of an existing part because nothing sticks better to PLA than more PLA. <laughs> <laughs> in fact i'm trying to figure out a way to make my first layer the difficult layer on my business cards here so print a single 0.2 millimeter layer of the gray so that i can then print all these other colors at full speed because then it won't matter <laughs> um because it'll be pla to pla or at least they have a border of pla and so it'll be much much more likely to stick and stay in place i'm even thinking about trying to print a 0.1 millimeter layer of clear maybe even pet g put down a layer of pet g but the problem is i'd have to make sure that pet g stayed for the entire print and then that pet g might actually peel away because uh, pet g doesn't stick very well to pla um so i'm thinking about trying that I'm, I'm not sure if that'll work and that would require a really really perfect first layer um but that would allow you to basically print at full speed you wouldn't have to sit there and go nee, 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 making sure that for those layers stuck you know like i printed that little tiny flame and that little tiny rocket and the little printing you see sometimes things got pulled apart like the d got pulled off that was me i had to lift the corner i tried to flatten it just popped it right off um i have other ones that came out better like this one here the two and the zero came off on the 2023 but the rest of it came out really nice uh, but there you go that's how you can do a multicolor. so this is your extra 10 minutes here um if you want to do a multicolor, you can do that or just print the embossment. It looks pretty cool that way too. And you can do that with any simple basic logo you can find. So here's my little rocket ship embossed into it. The protoposta symbol embossed into a Toyo symbol, the Stargate home symbol, Lucky Cat, you know, anything like that you can do. <clears throat> Why two layers? Well, you don't necessarily have to do two layers. <clears throat> um, but some colors work better when you print two layers. Some colors are too translucent, too see-through when you only print one layer and the color doesn't fully um, manifest. Like, for example, um, this protopasta on the back here looks like crap um, until you print the second layer. And then it looks great because it's too thin. It's too translucent. So if you're printing a really, really dark color, you might only need one layer. And if that's the case, just tell the model to print to 10.2 millimeters and then print your color into the cavity. And then you're, you can stop. You don't have to print the second layer of color and the second layer of the gray or whatever color you make the knot. Um, if you have a dark color, that might work. But also, if there's any imperfections on that first layer, they'll be fixed on the second layer. So if you have a slight gap or deviation or a tiny curl, that'll get covered up on the second layer. Um, so it all depends on how many filament swaps. For a nice tie, it's worth going through the extra work. For anything else, just print the embossment. But there you go. That's how you do it. If you don't want to do all that, you can pay me and I'll do it for you. <laughs> um, but that's it. That's how you can do it for free. Of course, this model is available on my shop. It's four bucks for the tie or for $9.50. I'll do it for you. Um, the 50 cents and stuff is to cover you know fees. If you want me to do a couple of them, just add a couple bucks. These are all plus numbers, so you can actually make them higher if you want. So, you know, if you want me to do like three emblems for you, pay me 12 or 13 bucks. And I'll do three of them. Just keep them simple. Nothing super complex. And also, um, you don't want a whole lot of text, like a single short word, sure. But if you give me a sentence, I'll do it for you. But unless you have a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, you're probably not going to be able to read it. <laughs> um, so just you know, consider that. But uh, that's it. You guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the little Tinkercad lesson on how to make your own customized stuff. And you can do this with anything, by the way. If you have a, an SD case that you want to print and you want to decorate, you can do that. You can put your name in it. You can put your emblem in it. You can put your company logo on it. You know, you can do s complex stuff like this with nine color changes, where you could do simple stuff like this with uh, just an embossment using the 
PNG to SVG or JPEG to SVG Convertio to make an SVG from anything and bring that into Tinkercad and use that as a shape to make an embossment or do whatever it is you want to do. So you guys have a great day. I will see you later.